The next lesson, which is in level one, lesson 7A of the basics of Christianity. And this lesson is about the resurrection of the dead. Powerful lesson, powerful thing that we want to talk about here. So let me read the key verse and let's, and let's dig in to what God wants to show us here. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man, speaking of Jesus Christ, also came the resurrection of the dead. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 21. We all wonder what happens to a person when they die. As I have gotten older, I find myself thinking about it more frequently. My own father passed away when he was about 67, although he had some health issues brought on by a lifetime of smoking and things of that nature, which I haven't practiced, but you know, who knows? And I'm getting close to that age. And my, my prayer is that I'll live a good long time with my wife, my children, my grandchildren, but at some point it's going to happen. What happens at that point? What is on the other side, right? And this is what we're talking about today. Every religion tries to explain it. Some say we're reincarnated over and over and over. First a mouse, then a cow, then a person, then down back to a bird or whatever. Others hope in a futile sense of a state of nirvana that will just arrive at this place where everything will be perfect. Others speak, many speak, of a heaven that can only be attained through good works. Is that somehow we can do things that buy off a you know, an omniscient, powerful God, creator. But for Christians, there's a clear understanding of what the Bible says about what happens after death, okay? If Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, the verse before what we read earlier, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. In other words, if all we're trying to do is live a great life here, and that's all there is to it, it's a waste of time. There's a, there's a next level of that we're coming to. And it's based on two things. First of all, that there's a resurrection of the dead and an eternal judgment. So let's talk about those things. First of all, one, the resurrection of the dead is a basic doctrine of the Christian faith. As we said in previous lessons in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, there's some basic doctrines that are covered. And this is one of them. A, the word resurrection means Raising up or rising up, okay? It means to cause, to stand up, rise, to raise from sleep from, from the dead. Christians, and even in Jesus' time, or as disciples, let me say that again, as disciples, both in the early church and now, we're not living simply for this earthly time because it's trivial in comparison to heaven. We are eternal beings with eternal life. We're living forever one way or another. And Jesus lived with the cross in the foreground and eternity in the background. He recognized that what he was doing had eternal consequences. B, the resurrection of the dead has two distinct parts. These two aspects include Christ's power over the grave and the phenomenon known as the resurrection. The Bible gives clear teaching about the death, or excuse me, the feet of death in the triumph of life. So there's some examples in the Bible about resurrection. First of all, the Old Testament includes three accounts. They're listed in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 17 to 24, which is the widow of Zarephath. 2 Kings chapter 4, 32 through 35, the Shunammite's son. Remember, she was blessing um, Elijah, Elisha. I get those guys confused sometimes. He promised her a son. He was born. At some point, he passed away. And then the prophet came and raised him to life. And lastly, the man on Elisha's grave. Elisha had been dead. He was buried. Some people were burying this old man. And some enemy came along. And they tossed his bones inside of Elisha's grave. And bing, he popped back to life. So God has power over the grave. He can bring somebody back to, from the dead if it's his decision. In the Old Testament, there are also two examples of men who never experienced death. The first was Enoch found in Genesis chapter 5. He was taken up in heaven, walking with God. He was up into heaven. And be Elijah, who was taken to heaven in a fiery chariot, 2 Kings chapter 2. There are also New Testament examples 
of resurrection be? Number one, in the Gospels, we see three accounts where Jesus raised people from the dead. Jairus' daughter, he ran the synagogue, came to Jesus, my daughter's dying. Jesus went, she had passed away, people were mourning. He raised her from the dead. The widow of Nain's son, they were carrying him out in his casket. He stopped the casket, opened up, bing. The, the, the young man rose from the grave. And also the story of Lazarus. That's for your blank, by the way. Lazarus was raised, right? He'd been dead for four days. Surely he stinks, huh? Two, the apostle Peter raised Dorcas from the dead. He said, here's Dorcas. She's been a blessing to us. Paul goes in. Boom, he raises Dorcas from the dead. Three, the apostle Paul raised Eutychus from the dead. This is the story in books, uh, Acts chapter 20 where the young man was sitting on the windowsill and had been a long time preaching and he kind of dozed off, fell out the window, bam, on the ground. Pretty much knew he was dead. Paul goes out. Raises him back up and they took him home. Three, there are four main aspects of the resurrection of the dead. A, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the central proclamation of the Christian faith. Now listen to this. Sometimes it's not always a thing that we're focusing on. But the idea of life after this life is an important thing. It matters to people, even if they don't accept Jesus Christ, even if they try to deny it. They're all wondering what's happening. And that is why it is the central proclamation. So what does the resurrection of Jesus declare? A, Jesus Christ is supreme over all created things. Death does not hold him back. He's able to go right through. B, future judgment is assured. Judgment. There will be a judgment. Guaranteed. Acts chapter 17, 31. C, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 1, 4. The resurrection declares this. D, believers are justified. Romans 4, 25. E, death is defeated. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, 8 through 9. F, Jesus reigns as high priest on God's throne. Hebrews 10, 12. Again, the resurrection declares these things. G, there is a new birth into a living hope. And again, the word hope is not like the world sees it nowadays where it's like a wishful thinking. Hope is a confidence. I, I am now born again and now I have a hope, a confidence that I will live for eternity with Jesus Christ. You know, just sitting here talking to you about it, I'm thinking, that's crazy. Because it's, it, again, in a lot of ways in the, in the human level, it's like a, the great unknown. We have to have faith to hold on to that hope in 1 Peter 1, 3. Two, this teaching means much more than the glorious knowledge that Jesus rose from the dead. That basic belief is essential to being a Christian. In other words, we have, we're told to uh, believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, right, in order to be saved. That's, that's what it's talking about right there. But, and Christ's resurrection has far-reaching implications for all believers. Basically, that he was raised, therefore, we shall be raised as well. B, the spiritual resurrection of the believer in Jesus is assured. Because primarily we are a spiritual creature. Yes, people are dead in their sins. And that's why we need to be born again. The spirit has to come back to life, right? But there's a resurrection for those of us who are believers that we, our spirit will go to God. Because Christ died physically, believers can experience spiritual resurrection when they come to Christ. Right? What are the evidences of those? Again, it's, it's already happened in our life when we accept Jesus. A new life is manifested. Hallelujah. We have a new life. We, we're, we're brand new. Amen? A new attitude towards life is established and maintained. Right? I'm, I'm not going to be defeated. God's got this. He's given a victory. A new master is obeyed. Who is that? God the Father. Jesus Christ. Amen? A new life purpose is embraced. I have a different reason for living in this world today than I had before. C. In addition to spiritual resurrection... There will be a future, future physical resurrection. Christ will raise those who are his on the last day. That is just mind boggling, right? My wife and I, we had a seven month old. And, I, and I'm a believer that, you know, children of a certain point until they kind of have a knowledge of sin, you know, that they go to, to be with God. So our, we believe that our seven year, month year old daughter who passed away 40 years ago. Coming up in this May, it'll be 40 years 
that she's with the Lord. And my father who passed away, he had become a believer before, you know, for the last 10, 12 years of his life, right? He's with the, with the Lord. But one day their physical bodies will raise up. And if I pass away before Jesus comes back, my body will rise up with them. Huh? At his coming, when Jesus comes back, physical resurrection will occur. At the last trumpet, during the rapture, there will be a resurrection of those who have died in Christ. So in other words, if I am a believer and I am living for Jesus Christ, but before the last trumpet, before the coming back of Jesus Christ, my life ends in this life. When that day comes, the rapture will happen. My physical body will be resurrected. Hallelujah. Into an, into an eternal body. In speaking of the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. In other words, those who have already died, and their bodies are in the grave, or wherever they might be. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now, it's talking about those who are believers and they haven't passed away at the time that Jesus comes back, right? We'll meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. So let me just go, again, I already kind of talked about, let me just go over again. So Jesus will come down from heaven. He'll give a command. The voice of the archangel will sound. The trumpet will sound. And then all those who have were believers, right? And who are, whose bodies are in the ground, decayed, whatever their, whatever state they're in, it doesn't even matter. They will all come back together, reconstitute, if you will, and become eternal uh, physical bodies. And they will go up and right with them, almost boom, boom, just happening. Those who are believers in this life, who are still alive at that point, will also rise up with them. Oh, that's a, just an awesome thing. It'll be mind-blowing to see, right, and be a part of. D, believers will experience a glorious resurrection. Glorious resurrection. So these are some of the things as part of the resurrection. So hold on to your seat because we're going to talk about all the things that you're going to experience as a believer when this moment happens. Number one, they will be raised to eternal life forever and ever. Daniel 12, two through three. They will have bodies like Christ's glorious body. And I talked about that eternal body, right? Romans 6, five and Philippians 3, 20 through 21. They will have bodies according to the will of God. Right? As God ordained them. Just, again, beyond our understanding, really. 1 Corinthians 15, 38. Four, they will have imperishable bodies. Bodies that can never decay, fall apart, end. Forever and ever. 1 Corinthians 15, 42. Five, their bodies will be raised in glory. I mean, it'll just be a, a monumental moment when that happens. And just the glory of God upon each and every one. 1 Corinthians 15, 43a. Six, their bodies will be powerful bodies, right? Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I consider myself to be somewhat powerful, but I'm, I'm getting up there in age. I, I know that my body, my mind thinks it's young, but my body thinks a whole other thing. It says, hoo, 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 hold on there, old man, right? But when I am resurrected, that this body will be a powerful body, huh? It'll be able to do awesome things. Whew. Right? 1 Corinthians 15, 43b. 7. Their natural bodies will become spiritual bodies. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. So it won't be just physical in the sense that we think of physical. It'll be just beyond. Amen? 8. They will be glorified with Christ. Right? We'll just join with Him and be one with Him. And 9. And here's an awesome thing. They will see the face of Christ. God. And as I've told people all the time, that's to me is one of the great blessings to experience the perfect love of the Father. You know, we yearn for love. We yearn to just be known and accepted and, and loved and to be in that place experiencing God is love, the perfect love of God. What an awesome thing. But as we'll discover in our next lesson, sometimes it's also going to be a negative thing. But I don't want to deal with that in this lesson. We'll talk about that next lesson in the, uh, the uh, basics of Christianity side of things. The hope of the resurrection is central to Christianity, which we have said. Because Christ rose from the dead, we too will one day receive eternal bodies that will never die. 
The resurrection power of Christ at work in our hearts ensures not only spiritual resurrection, but an eventual physical resurrection. This is our hope. This is our belief. Hallelujah. So get ready, believer. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, listen, it's, it's a simple thing. Jesus died upon the cross, gave his life so that every sin that you've ever committed, ever will commit, is under the blood. And he's willing to transform your life as you, as you invite him in. First of all, to repent, to acknowledge, I am a sinner. I need a savior. I, I have lived wrong before God. And now I give my life to you. And in that moment, you will be transformed into a child of God, born again, spirit come alive. And you too can be a participant in this great resurrection that we've talked about in this lesson.